Shotgun shooting, specifically wing shooting, is largely about hand-eye coordination. You can have so many of the other fundamentals right, but if you don't have your eyes right, it's gonna be a super frustrating experience. So if you want your eye game to be on target, you've come to the right place. Let's go. Okay, so wing shooting with the shotgun is actually a very simple concept, but simple concepts when not executed correctly or you're unaware of these simple concepts, it can make shooting a shotgun a highly frustrating experience. When you pull that trigger and nothing breaks time and time again, that kind of stinks, I know. I have been there when I first started shooting shotguns. I was just missing some of the very simple concepts. One of those biggest ones is your eyes. And there is so much that you can mess up with your eyes. The idea behind wing shooting is that your eyes and your hands will work together to move to where you're looking and shoot the target that you're looking at. That's how simple it is. Really all of us possess the skills necessary to do this. If you can look at an object in the distance and point at it, just like that, like I'm pointing right at the camera, my eyes are focused on the camera, my hands moved, or my hand moved, to where I'm looking. This is one of the biggest difference between shooting a shotgun and shooting a rifle. In shotgun shooting, we point. We look at our target, our hands move to where we're looking, and we pull the trigger. When you shoot a rifle, you're often aiming, right? You're up on the gun, you're focusing on the sights, you're lining them up perfectly. If you try that with a shotgun, it's gonna be a frustrating experience. Very small difference on what we do with our eyes, but very big difference on how this plays out with shooting a shotgun. So be encouraged. If you can point at an object in the distance without looking at your finger and lining it up, you have enough skill to successfully shoot a shotgun. Let's jump in and look at what we need to do with our eyes to make that happen. The first thing we have to figure out is which eye is your dominant eye. Now before you fast forward this video or skip out, go and I know my dominant eye, hold on. So many folks actually don't know their dominant eye. They assume because they're right-handed and they do so many things right-handed, they're right eye dominant. But that is not always the case. In fact, I see a lot of people that are right-handed but left eye dominant. We call that cross dominant. We're gonna address that a little bit later in the video, what we do for cross dominant, but the first thing we need to do is discover our dominant eye. This is especially important when I help youth or new shooters get into shotgun shooting sports. This is the first thing that I do, a quick test. I'll use my cameraman, for example. I am gonna put my finger under his nose, right? Both eyes open, finger under his nose. I'm gonna close my left eye. When I did that, my finger did not move. That's because I'm right eye dominant. If I would have closed my right eye, my finger appeared to jump. That's because my dominant eye had it lined up under his nose. So if your finger doesn't move, you know that the eye that you closed is not your dominant eye. If your finger jumps, that's because you closed your dominant eye. Okay, that's one way to do it. I'm gonna give you another one. This sun is bright, so I'm going back on with the lenses, is look at an object, make a small triangle with your hands, both eyes open, put it on the object. I'm over the camera lens, right? And then move it slowly back to your face, keeping it in focus the whole time. And if I'm gonna do that, my hand's gonna come right back to my right eye. Okay, we've established I'm right eye dominant. There might be a scenario where you do this finger trick and you, you still can't figure it out. You seem to be left eye dominant, but sometimes right eye dominant and it's really challenging. And when you do the triangle trick and you bring it back, you come right to the middle of your face. You're confused, you don't know what to do. Nothing's wrong with you, but there is the potential that you don't have a strong dominant eye. You're bouncing back and forth. Now let's jump into what to do about dominant eye situations. First, my number one piece of advice is shoot on your dominant eye side, if at all possible. Now I know, I know I can already hear it, but shooting on my left side feels so awkward. Really? Really, how many times have you tried? Like you shot three times, it felt awkward. You might need to put a few hundred rounds through shooting on the left side. And to demonstrate this, I'm gonna pick up a gun that's set up for a right-handed shooter and I'm gonna shoot left-handed, just to show you that it can be done. Okay, I'm right eye dominant, so I'm gonna be fighting my eyes on this. Here's a little tip. If you don't wanna fight your eyes and you don't wanna switch sides to your dominant side, this is another option. I would highly advise you to switch sides, but check this out. So I'm gonna just take a small piece of scotch tape this is the redneck version. There's actually kits you can buy, dot systems that you can buy that are probably a little bit more see-through than this. 
and I'm just gonna put this in a spot that obscures my vision a little bit on my right eye side. I can still keep both eyes open, which is crucial. We'll talk more about that in a minute, but it's gonna force my left eye to become the dominant eye. Let's check it out. Boom! Left-handed. I didn't have to close my right eye. It felt incredibly awkward because I'm not a left-handed shooter. That's okay. I don't practice left-handed, but I can tell you what, a little practice, this won't be a problem at all. So really the most challenging part of shooting left-handed for me in that situation wasn't my eyes, it was my mount. I haven't practiced mounting left-handed. So if you're gonna switch to your left-hand side, here's what I'll advise you. Spend some time dry mounting. Make sure the gun's safe. You can do this right in your house. You can do it this winter. You can look up where the wall meets the ceiling. There's a line there. And following that line until you hit the corner. Boom, boom. Do that over and over, you'll gain muscle memory. Mounting left hand will become natural. You're now shooting on your dominant eye side and you're gonna be way more successful. But if you're stubborn, don't feel like you can do it. You wanna to continue to shoot right-handed even though your left eye dominant. Redneck, piece of scotch tape, but they do make specific dot systems that are probably a little bit more ideal. Go ahead and put that on your shooting glasses on the left side, force your right eye to take over. I guarantee you're gonna be a lot more successful. If anyone's done this watching this video, I'd love to hear in the comments down below what success you've seen, either switching to the other side, so you're over your dominant eye, or using a dot system or something to obscure your vision so that your other eye takes over as the dominant eye. The next thing we want to check with our eyes is making sure that when we mount a shotgun, our eyes line up directly over the rib. Because in essence, let's think about a rifle, our eye is the sight, or at least the rear sight. And if we're off to the left or the right, it's gonna throw our whole shot off. So if I mount up a shotgun right here, and my dominant eye is right here, that's all sorts of trouble. Or if I'm over the shotgun like this, and my dominant eye is right here, that's all sorts of trouble. So we wanna be perfectly lined up over center, and also we wanna be perfectly lined up up and down. I'm looking right down this barrel right now. If my head comes up just a little bit like this and I start to peek, guaranteed you will shoot high. When your head isn't lined up with the rib, you will shoot high. When I work with shooters, if I see them consistently missing high, I know something's going on with their eye or their head. Are they peeking at the last minute? Sometimes people will come in like this and they pull their head as they shoot. It's small, but that will force you to miss. Some people really don't understand how this affects them, but a really simple thing just to visualize is if you point at an object in the distance, right? I'm looking at the object, not my finger, but now if I look at my finger, yep, it's spot on. Now, if I look at an object in the distance and my head is above my finger and I point at it, let's line it up, point at it. Okay, I'm looking at the object. Now I'm looking at my finger. Oh, I'm about two feet high. Our brain does this subconsciously, and so if your head's high, you'll miss high. If your head's low, you will miss low. Okay, great, Steve. We wanna make sure our eye is directly over the rib. How can we do that? There's a couple things we can look at. One is gun fit. I'm not gonna get super in-depth on gun fit. I'll make more videos that talk specifically about gun fit, but we'll talk real briefly about it. Let's grab a semi-auto shotgun, because a lot of the semi-auto shotguns on the market today make it very easy to make some adjustments with your gun. For example, on this shotgun, there are shims that you can put in here. You have to take off the butt plate, take off the stock, and you can change out shims. What that will do for you is allow you to adjust the drop at comb so you can make that lower or higher a little bit to get that vertical thing right, make sure your eyes aligned vertically, but you can also adjust the cast of a shotgun. The cast is how the stock is bent, either bent that way or bent that way. And since most shotguns are set up for right-handed shooters, the cast goes this way, away from their face, right? Because if I'm shooting a shotgun and I want my eye, this gun is clear and open, if I want my eye perfectly lined up, the cast has to go that way a little bit to allow me to get my face into it. If you're gonna switch and shoot lefty, it's gonna be a little bit more challenging to do that, if the cast is pushed into your face, you're gonna find that your eye is probably right of center. So you want to adjust that cast 
so your eye's perfectly over it. So cast and drop are two items. Length of pull is also important because most combs have a drop at comb and drop at heel. And it goes down like that, right? There's more drop at the heel, generally speaking, in most shotguns. So as you adjust the length of pull, that also can affect that. So three things to keep in consideration. Semi-auto shotguns, you can do that. But you might be saying, Steve, I have an over-under. I have no shim kits. Length of pull can be adjusted, like I have a Falcon Strike recoil pad on here. Adds a little bit to the length of pull, but so much harder to make adjustments. Bring it to a gunsmith, spend a lot of money, have them custom tailor your stock. That's great, but it might not be an option for you. Option number two is fit yourself to the gun. Fit yourself to the gun. I do this a lot. I shoot a lot of different guns. I don't dial all of them in when I'm doing reviews. So I fit myself to guns. Here's one quick tip to do that. When a lot of people mount, they will bring the gun to their shoulder and then they'll bring their head down. Look what happens if I do that. My dominant eye is super high and off to the right. I'm gonna shoot high right on every shot, guaranteed. Now, here's a simple, simple fix. Instead of mounting to my shoulder first, I'm gonna mount to my face first. So I'm gonna take this gun up like this into my cheek and back. Now look, I am right over that rib. Pretty decent gun fit. It still might not be perfect, but if you do that simple trick, mount to your face first, back to your shoulder, and it doesn't have to look that clunky when you're actually mounting, it can go like that, right? But I'm right over it. If I hit my shoulder first and get my head down, terrible. I'm in a horrible position. Mount to your face, then to your shoulder, you'll be much better off. Again, this is something that you can practice in the off season or really any time. Just work on consistently making those mounts. It might feel unnatural to mount to your face at first. Build that muscle memory. That will go a long way when you actually get out on the range or in the field hunting to be more successful. Number three, get target focus, man. When you're shooting a rifle, often your focus is on your sights. You're lining them up and you're holding still and pulling the trigger. That's not shotgun shooting. In shotgun shooting, we have a good mount, our eyes over the rib, because we've practiced, and then we're focused on the target. Where our focus goes, our energy flows. It's hands, eyes coordination. It's two of our hands and two of our eyes working together to move where we're looking. You become one with the shotgun. So wherever you're looking, your hands will follow. So as I follow that target, I don't need to look at my gun, I need to look at the target. If you try to aim your shotgun, you are gonna miss more than you hit, I can guarantee it. Now let's imagine that you're playing other sports. I don't know what sports you all like to play. You know, let's say it's basketball. You're gonna shoot the basketball. Where's your focus? Where are you looking? Are you looking at your hands at the ball? No, you're looking at the goal, because that's where it's going. Your hands and your eyes will work together to go there. Let's say you're playing baseball, you're up to bat. Are you looking at your hands? Are you looking at the bat? Or are you looking at the ball? And your hands and your eyes work together to connect. You can pick just about any sport that requires hand-eye coordination. It's the same concept. Focus on your target, ignore everything else. If your head's in the right spot, you got your eyes dialed in, you're gonna be much more successful. Last, but certainly not least, we're at number four, both eyes open. This is such a common question. Do I need both eyes open? You find a lot of people will close one eye. That's either one, because they're used to shooting rifles, or two, because they're not shooting on their dominant eye side. In order for their eye to look over the rib, they gotta close their dominant eye. This is not ideal in any form or fashion. Let's go back to sports. You're up to bat. This guy's gonna throw a 90 mile an hour fastball and you got one eye closed. It is super hard to judge speed, distance, angle of travel, movement of the ball. Oh, I mean, just try that. Whatever sport you play that requires hand-eye coordination, try doing it with just one eye. See how successful you are. You see, the way our vision is set up is that we're biocular. Both of our eyes are taking in visual data. That allows our brains to judge things like speed, angle of travel, distance, Pretty important when you're talking about moving objects. Close one eye, our depth perception's off. It's hard to judge speeds and angles. That's what shotgun shooting's all about. This isn't an active calculation that takes place in our brain. This is happening just naturally 
through our amazing eyes and our amazing brain how quick it can put it together. But if you're shooting with just one eye, you're losing half that data. And it's gonna be so much more challenging to be able to hit target. So based on all the things we talked about with your eyes, it should be easy to shoot with both eyes open. Either you shoot on your dominant eye side, don't wanna switch, we talked about obscuring your vision with redneck scotch tape, or actually going out and buying the dot system. I'll look that up and I'll put a link down below if that's something that interests you. And really, if you take care of those things, there should be no reason you can't shoot with both eyes open. Again, unless you kind of have that non-strong, non-dominant eye and you're bouncing back and forth, again, obscure the one eye, force one to take over, you can now shoot with both eyes open. So now that you got your eyes right, get out to the range, put this in practice, let me know how it goes. I'm gonna be making a whole lot more of these how to shoot a shotgun series videos. If there's a specific aspect of shotgun shooting you'd like to see me cover, put it in the comments below. And I'm gonna put all these videos in a playlist right up here. So go ahead, check that out, a lot more to come. Remember, whether in life or in the field, it's only those targets that you're laser focused on that you're gonna hit. So live, target focused. See ya.